Hi, I'm Rachel, and the other day, Steve Donahue and I were supposed to have a Skype conversation, but he stood me up. I guess you just can't count on some people. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'll be the bigger person and finally get along to uh, answering the tag that he tagged me in last week. This is another foodie tag from Josh at the Literary Gladiators, so I'll um, link both of their um, channels down below. It is uh, the pumpkin tag. I have the questions pulled up here on my phone, and I have some books to share. Not, not all of them will have physical copies attached, but I'll mention them. First question is pumpkin, a writer you always make a point to read in October. This doesn't really apply to me. I don't uh, have any writers who uh, I reread constantly in October. I think the closest I've gotten to this in uh, past years, or at least the last two past years, is that during the summer I've been reading Meg Wallitzer's Backlist. And next summer I have her first three published novels left to go. And, of course, I have her new novel, which I and all of the rest of the literate world apparently will be reading, <laughs> The Female Persuasion. <laughs> also, next February I think I'm going to make it a point to read all of the Virginia Woolf novels that I have left to go. So kind of, sort of, in the theme of this question. <laughs> question two is Pumpkin Spice, a work you would read to impress a millennial. So here's the thing about the millennial timeline of sorts. I've heard it said that uh, the millennial generation begins in 1980 or 1981 or 1982, but no matter what, 1983 is always included, so that makes me always a millennial, I guess. <laughs> Admittedly, I've never tried a pumpkin spice latte, but uh, it seems like this question might be asking, what book do I want to read <laughs> to impress myself? And that impress yourself part immediately makes me think of all of the unread books that I own on my shelves <laughs> and how I haven't gotten to them yet and how it would be rather impressive self if I got to reading some of those. There's just so much to read and I get into these habits of making reading lists in part for this channel, so you're partly to blame, booktube, <laughs> and I have to go to the library to get them and I do love checking out from the library. I am a library worker after all. But I also keep buying and hauling books on booktube <laughs> or even before booktube and I need to get to those books, so it'll definitely be another one of my goals for next year. I think this is uh, the earliest or one of the earliest bought books that I have on my shelf that I haven't read yet. Um, I bought it at uh, the bookstore at the Maryland uh, Renaissance Festival, but not this year, which I talked about this year's Renfest in my last video, but this one I bought at least a couple of years ago. And it's Jewish Life in the Middle Ages by Israel Abrahams, nonfiction about Jews in the Middle Ages. Something I'd really be interested in, really want to get to. <laughs> So it would impress me if I read some nonfiction about Jews of the Middle Ages, self. And this, uh, just uh, to pull it out, this is um, the bookmark for the Maryland Renaissance Festival bookstore, page after page. Uh, I think it just recently changed owners, so I don't know if all this information is still accurate, but I'm still so psyched out that we have our own bookstore at the Maryland Renfest. Question three is Pumpkin Pie, a work that makes you think of autumn. Well, this harkens back to that earlier question because I do have a book in mind that uh, for a while I read every Thanksgiving at least. It's a uh, middle grade book called Molly's Pilgrim by Barbara Cohen. Molly's Pilgrim takes place in the early 20th century, I believe. Molly is a new immigrant to the United States. She and her family have immigrated from Russia to escape anti-Semitic persecution. And during Thanksgiving, the teacher encourages uh, all of the students to make dolls of pilgrims to celebrate the holidays. So of course she means the Puritan dolls from the 17th century. But uh, when Molly goes home to ask her Yiddish-speaking mother to help with a pilgrim, her mother makes a doll that looks like herself and explains, well, hey, we are also immigrants to this country. There is not just one immigrant story. And uh, so... Molly has to go to school to explain all of this, and she's the target of bullying as, you know, the new Jewish girl, but, uh, you know, the teacher ultimately takes her side because, you know, that's the middle grade 
uh, book for you. <laughs> but uh, it always uh, touched me a lot because, uh, you know, Molly's Pilgrim was basically the type of immigrant that uh, is in line with uh, what my family would have been. I have some dolls right here. These were part of my grandmother's Yiddishkeit uh, collection. And uh, I'm sort of the most Jewishly invested uh, person in the family so that when she passed, uh, I got a lot of her Yiddishkeit. And so <laughs> these are the type of dolls that are the types of pilgrims uh, <laughs> I believe that uh, my family would have been. <laughs> Question four is Pumpkin Cheesecake, a work that was challenging to read but was a rewarding experience. So near the end of my senior year of college, my... Uh, modernist uh, fiction slash poetry professor. They were two different classes, but the same professor. But uh, he made a comment near the end of the year about how um, The Waves by Virginia Woolf was like a really challenging modernist read, like, you know, something that uh, separates the wheat from the chaff, as it were. And in my mind, I was like, challenge accepted. <laughs> So I waited until way after graduation and into the summer between my um, undergrad and graduate school experiences because I was smart about it. I wanted to give myself a bunch of off time to read this book. <laughs> and that's what I did. It was the first book that I read post-English bachelor's degree. <laughs> and uh, it was, I found it rather difficult. I loved uh, Mrs. Dalloway into the lighthouse, but I uh, found uh, the waves to be a bit overwhelming. <laughs> Which almost makes me feel bad because I just listened to Eric Carl Anderson in one of his videos talk about how The Waves is his favorite book. <laughs> and maybe I could uh, get more out of it now that I'm older and wiser, but uh, at the very least I felt like I uh, unlocked an accomplishment at least by getting through the book <laughs> and showing my professor. <laughs> Not that he ever knew. <laughs> Question five is Pumpkin Bread, an underrated work from a well-known writer. I naturally automatically always go back to this answer whenever um, the question is posed like this. I think of The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling, and a lot of people, a lot of my friends read it, and I think we're just disappointed that it wasn't like a clone of Harry Potter or something and dismissed it, and or maybe they, uh, a lot of people maybe didn't like literary fiction as much, I don't know, but uh, I thought it was really good. I thought it was complex and thoughtful, I love the characters. She can uh, write such great middle-aged women, I thought, and uh, the class issues that came up in, in the book were just uh, very compelling, and I th think it's a shame that she wasn't given more recognition for the casual vacancy, and I hope that she goes back to literary fiction in the future. I mean, I know she has her mystery novels, and now there's even more Harry Potter type stuff coming out, but uh, <laughs> Joe write some more literary fiction that explores uh, English town life. You know? Question number six is Pumpkin Soup, a work that you first enjoyed but then lost interest. For this one I have The Scent of Pine by Laura Vapniar. It's a really short novel and I got it signed a couple of years ago at uh, the Jewish uh, Literary Festival in DC. I'd read her short story collection, There Are Jews in My House, and I enjoyed it and I Heard that this one was about Soviet camp in the 1980s and thought that would be interesting, but uh, it really wasn't much about that at all. Most of it was uh, this clunky love affair where there was a lot of exposition of the main character telling this uh, sort of one-night stand guy a lot about her life, and uh, I don't know, it, it didn't work for me at all. But at the very beginning, it was like this academic conference and this setup about the narrator being... Uh, dissatisfied with her life, and, and that intrigued me, but then it, it pretty quickly went downhill from there. And uh, I got it signed, so I don't want to get rid of it, I, but maybe I should, but it was disappointing. <laughs> Question seven is Pumpkin Donut, a light five-star read. For this one, I'm going for the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. Oh, I just love these. These are just such comfort reads to me. This is like the type of open, science fiction, diverse world that I want to believe that is out there in space for us. <laughs> and uh, I'm just so looking forward to the third book. I've already uh, gushed about it uh, coming out in 2018, and I'm sure I'll talk about it more again. But uh, these are my happy, light, five-star reads. I just love these. <laughs> Question eight is pumpkin picking. Within the last year, in which genre did you purchase the most books? 
I took a half-hearted stab at trying to count the books that I talked about in my literary halls this year, although a lot of the books I talked about were from uh, earlier years. <laughs> See, I'm trying to backtrack and make excuses for myself. I've bought a lot of books, <laughs> and I know that uh, the majority of them are in literary fiction and with a significant subset of literary and mainstream Jewish fiction because uh, that's what's mostly on my TBR, and for the most part, when I go out to buy books, I stick close to my TBR. <laughs> At least I have that going for me. <laughs> I'm not usually one of those uh, browse and buy on the spot people, but uh, that does happen occasionally. <laughs> Question nine is Pumpkin Carving, a work that could have been trimmed down. At first I was going to go with Here I Am by Jonathan Safran Foer, but I really didn't like that book, and the more I think about it, the more I dislike it. <laughs> so I thought instead I'd challenge myself with a book that I actually do like a lot. This is The Wanderers by Meg Howry, which I just finished uh, this morning. <laughs> the Wanderers is a uh, book mostly about a group of uh, three astronauts who were picked uh, by a company to go to Mars. But first, they have to be in this simulation for 17 months in Utah, sort of going through a dry run of the experience. And they're like heavily simmed so that uh, they're at Mars uh, as much as they can be. And you know, they're in close quarters and uh, they're playing this game basically. So it really goes deep into their emotional states and what's real and what isn't real. And uh, I thought that part came out really strong and that Halvery is a wonderful character writer and uh, with who uh, gets really deep into these characters' heads. But uh, she also goes into the heads of some family members, and I think it kind of went off the rails a little bit there, and it just uh, felt half-formed and uh, distracting from what I think the real meat of the story was. So, so that's my answer. But overall, I really, really like this book. Question 10 is Pumpkin Painting, a book with magnificent illustrations. I don't really have a lot of books with illustrations in my condo. The biggest one is uh, the first illustrated Harry Potter edition from a few years ago. I don't actually have the other ones, but I have the first one prominently displayed on my shelves. <laughs> but I feel like that's uh, sort of an easy go-to answer. <laughs> uh, other than that, I thought about um, the children's books that I get for my niece, or I thought about a video I did a couple of uh, months ago when uh, my niece came to visit me and we went to the library and got a bunch of uh, dinosaur books and how um, our favorite of those books, Brontarina, had some great illustrations in them, so I'll link that video down below. But since we're coming up on NaNoWriMo in under a week now, <laughs> What better time to embarrass myself with 20 plus year old stories that I wrote? <laughs> like most American girls growing up in the 90s and onward, I grew up with the American Girls dolls, which uh, for the rest of you, the American Girls dolls um, is the product of a company that, uh, well, at first they wanted to do a historical line uh, to get girls interested in uh, their product. And uh, <laughs> what I mean is that uh, each doll that they had was uh, associated with a historical period, like Felicity was from the 1700s, and the doll I had, Molly, was from the 1940s, and the doll my sister had, Samantha, was from the 1900s in America. And these stories that they wrote about these girls were basically plucky adventure stories where the girls uh, interact with the world as it was back then, but they also get to, you know, stand up for themselves and for what they believe in and, you know, what have you. And uh, to go along with these formulaic stories, uh, the company also made dolls and accessories to go along <laughs> with that. <laughs> and uh, sometime 20 years ago, I think, is when they started to introduce uh, the American Girl dolls of today, which I think now are drastically different. But uh, when they were first introduced, they were kind of introduced as uh, in the same vein as the historical dolls, except that you get to be the authors of the stories so that they, you know, they had these templates of dolls that you could choose, you know, based skin color and hair color and all of that. And then they had, um, you know, your usual uh, accessories and so forth that you could buy for the dolls. But also they gave you book templates that matched the historical book templates so that you could write your own stories. 
And I really got into it. I, I really, what I really wanted to do was get an American Girl doll of today, which I did, and then get certain accessories and then write about them the way that the accessories fit into the historical novels. And I got through a couple novels. <laughs> so I wish I'd kind of done them all, but uh, at least I did a few. And, and the first one is um, the Meet uh, Girl. I named my doll Lauren. So this is uh, Meet Lauren and it takes place in 1994 because every uh, series starts in the four year. <laughs> and so here are my illustrations that I did. I mean this, these are just works of art. <laughs> we start out with a family tree just like uh, in the historical books. And then throughout this story, we have uh, illustrations. I mean, isn't this just, I should have gone to art school, right? These are just, uh, these are just spectacular, spectacular works of art. <laughs> and uh, at the end of uh, the story, just like in the historical novels, they have a looking back at uh, section this is looking back at today, of course. Theirs was more historical. And for these, I put in magazine photos, uh, the way that in historical novels they put in archival photos. <laughs> and... Then in the back we have uh, <laughs> the author section and the author photo. <laughs> I'll embarrass myself further and give you my author bio. <laughs> Rachel Morrow is a 14-year-old American girl who goes to St. Paul's School for Girls in Maryland. She is currently in the 8th grade. Besides writing, Rachel enjoys singing, watching science fiction, and playing sports. What? Who enjoys playing sports? I don't remember this. <sighs> she has played on school teams for soccer and field hockey for a few years. Yeah, when they had to take me. <laughs> And is in the choir, the Children's Chorus of Maryland, which is definitely something I was much more into, for real. <laughs> Question 11 is Pumpkin Ice Cream, the most random book you would recommend. In my last tag video, I talked about my favorite so far book from that I've read this year. So now I guess I'll talk about my second favorite book uh, that I've read this year, Planetfall by Emma Newman. And I think it might uh, appeal to more people than just sci-fi fans, even though it is definitely science fiction. It's about these people who leave Earth to live on a colony on another planet. And they're following this charismatic leader who uh, thinks she hears the voice of God. But uh, it's not really a religious book per se. The, the character, the charismatic character, kind of goes up the proverbial mountain, as it were, and everybody else is living their lives, waiting for her to return. And it's a book about a community and about secrets, and uh, it has an unreliable narrator, so people interested in a sort of a mystery unraveling might uh, be into this book because of, uh, of how we learn things in increments. And I think people interested in, uh, you know, complicated characters would like it too. I, I fell for it because of uh, the secrets that the uh, protagonist was keeping from herself and from us and how it unraveled and how uh, Newman uh, dealt with, uh, with hoarding and obsessive compulsive disorder in this character so that people interested in mental illness uh, might uh, be interested in how it's handled in this novel. So I think it would appeal to a lot of people on it. I really liked it a lot more than I thought I would. <sighs> Question 12 is what is your favorite way to enjoy pumpkin slash what is your favorite dish where pumpkin is the main ingredient? I don't really eat a lot with pumpkins. I think uh, if pressed I could have pumpkin pie, but uh, I always prefer apple pie. Those seem to be the two choices at my Thanksgiving. <laughs> I feel like I should get into pumpkin seeds because they're good for you. <laughs> I also for the past couple of years have made sweet potato pie. By me making it, I mean that my mother and my sisters helped me. <laughs> my roommate from college, uh, who I've been calling my roommate for college ever since we were roommates like 13 years ago, <laughs> she um, hosts occasionally some pie parties, like around, uh, you know, March. <laughs> and sweet potato pie is a lot like pumpkin pie, but <laughs> my roommate says if I make it again, she's, uh, she's gonna get mad at me. <laughs> I have to branch out and be more daring next time. <laughs> and finally, question 13, pumpkin patch. Who do you tag? 
I went back to my comments because I'm trying to pick people who will hopefully be watching this video, and I thought I'd go with Jen from Remembered Reads because I see that she also does tags on her channel. So if you're looking for a new one, here you go. <laughs> well, that about covers it. Uh, I'm going to go edit this and I think slap on a picture on my thumbnail, I think from a couple of years ago when I was at my sister's house with my niece uh, in front of pumpkins. <laughs> Halloween has definitely become much uh, more intimate to me since uh, 2013 because my niece was born on Halloween. <laughs> I can't wait to see her this weekend. I'll be uh, here at my condo on Halloween proper, uh, hopefully getting a few uh, trick-or-treaters, although in my condo there aren't a lot of kids, but uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll get a couple. I hope that the rest of you celebrating enjoy your Halloweens as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.